اسمي راما وعمري تسع سنين هاي بستي فرح انا هلقيت بخيمة وطلعت من طلعت من بيتي بسبب الحرب وكنا يعني خايفين عشان هيك طلعنا شيف على الشفا خيمة اخذت البستي لاني خايفة عليها ويعني هي بستي وبأك... وانا ما اكلهاش اكل كثير لانه بس خبز بس لا لقيت هذا الاكل في بالخبز جنب الخيمة اعطتنا اكل للبستي ف... فيعني سلم طعمه هو من شوي هو قليل بس البستي حبته أميتي إنه نروح على البيت ونكون بأمان وأصير يعني أروح على المدرسة وأرجع أرقي ألبس وتستنينا على الباب زي كل يوم يعني أتمنى إن تتحرر فلسطين أمينا بعد أكثر من سبعين سنة إن شاء الله تتحرر فلسطين عشرين يوم اللي احنا عشناه في الظلام انا فكرت انه اصنع هدول المراوح من اطول الضفاف انا اسمي حسام محمد العطار نازح من شمال قطاع غزة عمري 15 عام احنا اول عشرين يوم احنا عشنا فيهم هنا في اللي هو في المخيم في رفح فما كانش له طاقة طبعا الجهاز اللي انا عملته انه مراوح فهي بتولد مع الطاقة الحركية بتولد طاقة كهربائية الماتور تبعها له مكون من ملفات مغناطيسية فهي كل ملفة فهي بتولد طاقة فهي بتمر عن طريق الأسلاك لحد ما تصل الخيمة عنا وتطوي المكون المفاتيح موصلات المراوح إنه كل مكان في طاقة رياح فهي بتمر عن طريق الأسلاك لحد ما تصل هذول المفاتيح بعد ما تكون سرعة الرياح عالية فأنا برفع هذا المفتاحين نخزن في البطارية. بعد ما يعني توقف سرعة الرياح فأنا بنزلهم برفع هذا فبكون يعني عندي ضوء. بكون المكان مضيء. إنه تخلص الحرب على خير وإنه أكمل تعليمي لحد ما أطلع مهندس لحد الحين. I will go in a trip and I will use all modes of transportation. I will use bicycle, car, cargo van and donkey car. Hi, Sin TV. I'm Abdullah from Gaza and I'm still alive. Today, I'm going to Dar al-Balah city from the Nusrat camp. Before the war, this trip took for me 10 minutes by the car. But now, this trip took for me an hour. I'm now in the middle area in Gaza Strip and Nusrat camp. 40% of the car inside Gaza were destroyed or damaged as a result of war and chilling. There is difficulty getting in transportation here because of unavailability of gas, because of the close of all the crossings. The price of one liter of diesel reaches $30. So some people also use cooking oil as a fuel. Here I am now inside the car, but the car is the most expensive method of transportation. It's 20 shekels, which is equivalent to $5. With the cargo van, the cost of the trip has five shekels. You are forced to remain standing the whole way. With the donkey cart, its cost is also high. It may reach ten shekels. I'm now in the Dar al Balah city after two hours. There are some dangers that you may face while you are in transportation. Sometimes there is bombing. You are always afraid. I am seeing are you. Speaking to you from the north. Today, I will take you with me to do a very special event, which is a drawing on the rubble of houses. Come with me and see what will we draw. I am ready. We don't have a drawing notebook. We wanted to make notebox for all the destroyed buildings to draw on and express what is inside us.
I'm Shayma, 21 years old, a computer engineering student. I'm Daha, 18 years old, an English major student. I'm Malik, 16 years old, and I'm in 10th grade. Hi, Seen TV. We are Gazan Voices. On the 7th of October, we left our house and got displaced nine times ever since. We were forced to evacuate from the north to the south when the tanks were only one street away from us. We've survived five near-death encounters and lost over 70 members of our family. With no place left to go, we ended up at this camp with all of our relatives and neighbors. And this is our camp. And we've been using every means at our disposal to survive. From melting plastic to light fire instead of pricey firewood. To using a mud oven to bake bread. To using a fish tank pump to pump water to this tank. To crafting our own kitchen. During those tough times, we stood together as a community. We cleaned our camp together. We cooked together. And we were always there for each other. We started a mini school to detach the kids from this horrible reality. And finally, we're back to being students studying online. We will continue to strive and resist until a free Palestine. We're, We're seen. Are you? People think that shakshuka is a natural dish, but it's not actually. By seeing TV, it's Farah still fighting to survive. And today we will make shakshuka, which is one of the most famous Palestinian Arab dishes. Shakshuka originated in North Africa and the Arab country. Each Arab country cooks it in their own way. For example, North African countries, they use onions and tomato paste. The only reason for eating shakshuka in Israel is that Jewish immigrants from North Africa brought it there. It's called shakshuka because the sound it makes when placed on fire, like check, 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 shakshuka, you know? So, why Palestinians love this dish so much? It's considered cheap and also full of vitamins and very delicious. First, we will add some vegetable oil. We'll put the tomatoes and the pepper. Now we will add some salt. Now we will add the eggs, two eggs. Let's try it. 10 out of 10. I'm seeing. Are you? Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Yep, all good. Salam, Habibi. How are you? Um, Habibi, I'm good. I'm good. Um, so we're, we're going to do a bit of a Q&A, and then we'll have uh, time for uh, the audience to ask questions as well. So, Ahmed, um, most most importantly, how, how's your family doing? So I contact with him yesterday. Um, as you know, Zan, that what's happening before a few days, and they come to school where they were, uh, they, they was, and uh, the bad situation, like my nephew's still in the hospital until now, but he was unconscious yesterday. Before a few days, he awake again, alhamdulillah. Um, I don't know where they are, they are displaced from the area where they was, because the... Israel occupation told us to move because they want to attack that area. So now I have no idea how they are or where they are, what's happening within that bush. I'm um, uh, so sorry, Ahmed. Um, I know we, we've talked about that and we've talked a lot about um, just how you feel about being away from your family um, in, in a safe place with, with everything that's still happening there right now. How Can you describe for, for everyone here in the audience what it's like to be away from your family at a time like this? So, really, to be honest, it's not easy at all. It's not easy at all. That, uh, let me tell you something that happened before a few days, that when I was sitting and I received a call and messages from the people, I'm not worry, your family is good, they are fine, uh, don't worry about them. That made me feel more worried about okay, what's happening, like, why the people they send me, don't worry about them, like, what's happening there. And I saw the news on the ch news channels, and I didn't manage to, to reach any one of them. So this thing, I live it every single day, every day. I really try to, to, 
to check my phone every morning and see the news and maybe I will sell the news there. And unfortunately, this is what's happening. This is what's happening with me for a long time since that I left until now that every few days I hear the news about it. So it's not easy at all. It's the worst thing that maybe will happen for really anyone that you will see your family news as a, not a good news, a very bad news about them on the news channel, but in the same time that you don't manage to to reach anyone of them, to contact with anyone of them, to, to really know if they are fine or not, or what's happening with them. Ahmed, obviously in the film it shows you're in South Africa now, right? Um, what has your experience been like in South Africa so far? Can, can you describe that? So, it's not just about South Africa, there is a lot of countries around all over the world, as you know, they support as a, a people and they going out in the streets and try to make different, try to stop this genocide, try to, to change what's happening there. But in South Africa, because I'm between them and I see that, I really feel it and I really feel how they are really support and for me, I don't know, like, but I feel that they really, really mean it and really support from them hearts because they feel that and they was living in the apartheid time. So they really know what that mean and what we feel in that moment in Palestine. So when I saw them in the street and go out with them and see what they are doing, I really feel something like from my heart that they do it because they really believe and they really feel what's happening there and they really want to change it. The, the protests in South Africa are different, right? They're different than anywhere in the world that I've, I've seen. Yeah. Um, yeah, the passion. Uh, I'm going to ask one more question and open it up to the audience as well and I, I have some more, but Ahmed, in the film, um, you're, you're walking through your home uh, after it was bombed, right? And you say, Alhamdulillah. How, how in that moment do you, do you think that and say that in, 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 in such a, a tragic moment? So, for us that we believe that, as a Muslim, that we believe that anything bad will happen for us, there is a very good thing after that will be. And still, we believe that. We believe that uh, the God Allah will will send us something much better after all that, after everything that happened, after all these people that are killed, after all these uh, uh, houses that uh, have been bombed. Uh, Alhamdulillah for everything, because we really believe from our hearts that after all of that, something good will happen. Like, for example, my uh, cousin and his wife and his uh, sister before three days, I don't know if you saw that video from Gaza for my cousin, he hold my cousin hand and walking in the street and he said, Alhamdulillah, after they killed. And they said, Allah yarhamhum, that Allah give them mercy because he know and all of us know that we are in a better place, and in the same time, something good will happen after that, inshallah. I'm going to ask the audience if they have some questions too. Um, hopefully you'll be able to hear. If you can't, I'll, uh, I'll help, try, uh, I'll help uh, bring it back. Um, do we have other mics too, or is it? Is it does anyone have questions for Ahmed? Yeah, right here. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum, Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, I can hear you. Um, my name is Alina. I'm from Lebanon. My village was just bombed in Lebanon, and we lost a family member. And I was, I wanted to know, is there any way that we can help you in you, like, like, and your family and the people? Like, is there any way that we can? really like make a difference 
Thank you. I'm really very sorry about what's happening with you and your family and what's happening in your country. Uh, before anything, before I reply that, unfortunately, what's happening there in Lebanon is really, really very bad. And as same thing, what was happening in Palestine, in Gaza, then it's go to West Bank, and then now it's in Lebanon and. We don't know if tomorrow it will be in Syria, Iraq, Yemen, in all or, or the Middle East, because they don't want to kill a Palestinian just because they are Palestinian. They don't want to kill the Lebanese just because they are Lebanese. They just want to kill the humanity. They want to kill it from all over the world because this is this thing that they don't want it. And I really feel very sorry about what's happening in Lebanon because I don't think there is anyone really will feel uh, and know what's happening there more than us, more than the people they already live it and still live that for more than a year. Uh, about your question is that I feel that if you try to to speak and share this thing, I know this world don't do anything. I know this world don't try to make different as a uh, government, as a uh, the people they have the power, but in the same time, one day something different will be. One day there is something will happen that will will stop all of that, inshallah. Uh, and if not, at least after many, many, many years, they will write it in the history, and they will all the world they will know how they are kill us, how they. Uh, kill the humanity, how, what they're trying to do, like a lot of people before all of that, and now we read a history about them and we know how they are bad people. So at least let the new generation know about them. Let the new generation know what's the truth and who's the owner of the land and what they are doing with us and why they do that. So if we are dead one day, if we are killed one day, at least the new generation, they will never forget and they will still fight for that. Uh, from the other side, I think Zan who can help in that and let you know how you can do it. Assalamu alaikum, Ahmed. Um, first of all, thank Hi. you. Sorry. Thank you for um, everything you've done. I've actually been following you on social media very early on, and I can't imagine it's easy to take video of everything you've been going through and everything your family and friends are going through. So thank you for showing the world what's, what's been happening in Gaza. Um, my question to you is what can we, as people who live in America, not what can we do, but I guess what would Palestinians like us to do? Um, what is something we should continue doing or do more of, in your opinion? So, sorry, what, what? Uh, as people who live, uh, sorry, as people who live in America, what would Palestinians living in Palestine like us to do more of, to advocate for you? As a Palestinian in US, Sorry, we're having mic issues. As people in general who live in America, what do Palestinians who live in Gaza and in Palestine want us to do more of? Okay, let me tell you something. Thank you for your question first. Uh, when I was in Gaza, I arrived to a point that we put our phones, we put everything, and we sit between ourselves and looking around that no one support, no one do anything for us. And that really arrived us to point that we can't see anyone with us, we can't see anyone support us. And that's really hurt us and broken us and killed all the hope. Uh, but when South Africa went to the ICJ and they speak uh, about what's happening in Palestine that really make us feel that oh finally there is someone with us we can see people stand with us we can see someone that who trying to make different 
So I really, me and all the people in Gaza, we feel that if you really want to make different or you really want to support the people there, if you just speak about it, if you show that you're trying to to make different and try to make different, that will really help us and will support the people as a mental health also. Even that, like I know all of us are speaking for this year and many years before and not a lot of things happen, not a lot of things make different, but in the same time that give the people there a hope that there is at least someone still with them, someone is still support them, someone is still care about them with everything that happened around it. So at least show them that we don't forget. We don't forget you. We still remember you. We still support you. We're still here for you. We're still trying to do a lot for you and for the people there. Uh, that really will help. Assalamu alaikum. This is, thank you. Right, so, so, so now I just have a question. How can, like, inshallah, we are doing three events in our local community for Palestine. And now you're making me think, how can we show you here in California? How can we show the people in Gaza what we are doing? Is there a way that we can share videos with all of those people? You mean with the people in the U.S.? Well, the people in the United States, but can we, how do we show the people of Gaza that we support them, that maybe we can send videos to them so they can see that we, we do care and that we are trying to, to change hearts and minds here in the U.S. and even here in California? Believe me, believe me that, yes, there is a, internet problems in all over Gaza Strip. And not all the people, they have internet, but really when you try to make something even far away in US, they, they can hear you. They can hear everything that you're trying to do. They can see it. If not now, maybe tomorrow, not tomorrow, maybe in the next week, but at least one day they will hear it, they will see it. If someone, he see it, he will share it with the people around him and he, Tell them, look, look what they are doing there. Like, there is still people. Like, you have no idea how many times that we crying when we saw the people in the street start speaking about Palestine and say free Palestine and all of that in the street. You have no idea how many days we, we cry from the happiness when we saw that. That really there is someone still remember us and speak about us and support us. That really makes it wrong. So want to do whatever it is it will arrive for them they can hear you they can hear everything that you are trying to do so just do it just speak about it even if you don't share on the social media and i understand there is a lot of people they they can't share on social media they can show the public that the, the public that we support by this time because a lot of things and i know a lot of reasons but in the same time the people there they can hear you they can hear you and they are they hear you so do it just say it just to speak just share just do everything that you can for them thank you this is salaikum heaven um, my, name is, my name is Amina, and I'm from um, the Bay Area. So first of all, I just wanted to say thank you, and may Allah extend your life and your message and your mission. I'm really, really proud of you and impressed with you. Um, a lot of people ask you questions, but I just want to give you some inspiration that, ooh. Can you hear me? Yes. I just wanted to say that there's many of us in this community that have stood up against our bosses, 
that have walked against the grain, that are teaching our kids that have never, ever, ever taught them about Gaza. We're now speaking of it and we're taking to the streets for you and your family. So I hope you know we, you are not alone. You are very loved and may Allah just surround you guys with everything and keep telling your story because we're listening. So good luck with everything. Allah, thank of you course. so much. I, I have a question. Are you in the mosque? Yeah. yeah. I really so proud of you, Allah. Uh, I'm really proud of the Muslim community and all of you to be here today. Thanks so much and thanks for your support to show it. Um, you have no idea that you are just sitting here today, just coming to see a documentary but you don't know how you make difference and support, even if you don't say anything, but to be here, it's, it's support. So thank you so much for all of you. Are there any other questions before we let Ahmed go back to sleep, maybe? <laughs> no sleep. <laughs> it's no such sleep. a fine now here. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> okay, uh, one more. Do we have one more, Ahmed? Okay. You got it? Okay. Or we have another. doesn't have to be one more. Assalamu alaikum, Ahmed. I'm also Bye. from uh, I'm also from Palestine and also from Lebanon. I uh, experienced some of the war. I just came from Canada to visit my sister. Uh, my question is: How was your experience exiting uh, Gaza and entering uh, Egypt, Cairo? Uh, how did you feel? The, how difficult was it to transition to Egypt, and how difficult was it to, to migrate to Africa? Exactly. Thank you. So, uh, we don't mention about this part in the documentary a lot. We just say that I was trying to, to leave, but um, in the reality that I was trying many, many, many times to, to, to leave. And uh, I think all of you know the news and all of, the, all of you know uh, parts of it, how the people in Gaza, they left and how much money they paid to, to leave. But the problem is that when Israel see that you trying to to make different, when you trying to change and share what's happening there, they don't want you to to leave easy like any other people. Like for me, I tried four times, and every time that we pay a lot, we pay a lot, we pay a lot, and from in all the time that Israel cancel it, they don't approve it, they don't allow for me to leave, they don't allow for me to go out. And in every time they give me the answer that they don't allow for you, they don't want you to leave because they want to arrive to Rafa and they want to arrive for you. So what they want just because you are as a journalist or a content creator they or someone just to try to share and speak the truth and what's happening with him in Gaza. Uh, they don't want you to still alive so that you can still keep speaking and share about what's happening and show the world what's happening. So it was a very, very, very bad experience to, to, to try to, to share, to try to do a lot of things just to, uh, to, to go out. Just imagine that how many times that I'm trying, trying hard to, to do all of that and to, to obey, to leave. And in every time he was saying, no, no, no. And I wasn't just want to leave because I can speak like outside much better. And I can say 
uh, whatever that I want in a better situation with better internet and all of that. At the same time, I was needed medical help. So I really was needed. So if, and it's still until now, I, I, I need it. But like in the same time, if they don't want to kill, kill me and shoot me there, for example, they will kill me from the other side for, because of my health and they don't care about that because this is what they want, this is what they want to do because of that they don't allow for a lot of people to, to go out as a, as a journalist and most of them they try to pay much more to go out question I think that I think that's great. Um, let's get one one picture with Ahmed. So I'm just gonna take it from here. He'll be here, and everybody wave. Everybody wave real quick. Okay, Ahmed, you gotta wave. Say hello. All right, um, and I'll I'll send that just to make sure everyone everyone has it too. If you'd like it, Ahmed. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, such an early hour. I know that. But um, let's give Ahmed a, a round of applause. So. Salam, everyone. Thank you so much Salam. to be here today. Thanks, Ahmed. We'll see you. Salam.